More about thought. I give place here to some further consideration of thought. You will never become great until your own thoughts make you great, and therefore it is of the first importance that you should think. You will never do great things in the external world until you think great things in the internal world, and you will never think great things until you think about truth, about the verities. To think great things, you must be absolutely sincere, and to be sincere, you must know that your intentions are right. Insincere or false thinking is never great, however logical and brilliant it may be. The first and most important step is to seek the truth about human relations, to know what you ought to be to other men and what they ought to be to you. This brings you back to the search for a right viewpoint. You should study organic and social evolution. Read Darwin and Walter Thomas Mills, and when you read, think, think the whole matter over until you see the world of things and men in the right way. Think about what God is doing until you can see what He is doing. Your next step is to think yourself into the right personal attitude. Your viewpoint tells you what the right attitude is, and obedience to the soul puts you into it. It is only by making a complete consecration of yourself to the highest that is within you that you can attain to sincere thinking. So long as you know you are selfish in your aims or dishonest or crooked in any way in your intentions or practices, your thinking will be false and your thoughts will have no power. Think about the way you are doing things, about all your intentions, purposes, and practices, until you know that they are right. The fact of his own complete unity with God is one that no person can grasp without deep and sustained thinking. Anyone can accept the proposition in a superficial way, but to feel and realize a vital comprehension of it is another matter. It is easy to think of going outside of yourself to meet God, but it is not so easy to think of going inside yourself to meet God. But God is there and in the Holy of Holies of your own soul you may meet him face to face. It is a tremendous thing, this fact that all you need is already within you. That you do not have to consider how to get the power to do what you want to do, or to make yourself what you want to be. You have only to consider how to use the power you have in the right way, and there is nothing to do but to begin. Use your perception of truth. You can see some truth today. Live fully up to that, and you will see more truth tomorrow. To rid yourself of the old false ideas, you will have to think a great deal about the value of men, the greatness and worth of a human soul. You must cease from looking at human mistakes and look at successes. Cease from seeing faults and see virtues. You can no longer look upon men and women as lost and ruined beings who are descending into hell. You must come to regard them as shining souls who are ascending toward heaven. It will require some exercise of willpower to do this, but this is the legitimate use of the will, to decide what you will think about and how you will think. The function of the will is to direct thought. Think about the good side of men the lovely, attractive part, and exert your will in refusing to think of anything else in connection with them. I know of no one who has attained to so much on this one point as Eugene V. Debs, twice the socialist candidate for President of the United States. Mr. Debs reverences humanity. No appeal for help is ever made to him in vain. No one receives from him an unkind or censorious word. You cannot come into his presence without being made sensible of his deep and kindly personal interest in you. No one, whether millionaire, grimy working man, or toil-worn woman, meets him without receiving the radiant warmth of a brotherly affection that is sincere and true. No ragged child speaks to him on the street without receiving instant and tender recognition. Debs loves men. This has made him the leading figure in a great movement, the beloved hero of a million hearts, and will give him a deathless name. 
It is a great thing to love men so, and it is only achieved by thought. Nothing can make you great but thought. We may divide thinkers into those who think for themselves and those who think through others. The latter are the rule, and the former the exception. The first are original thinkers in a double sense, and egotists in the noblest meaning of the word. Schopenhauer. The key to every man is his thought. Sturdy and defiant though he look, he has a helm which he obeys, which is the idea after which all his facts are classified. He can only be reformed by showing him a new idea which commands his own. Emerson. All truly wise thoughts have been thought already thousands of times, but to make them really ours, we must think them over again honestly till they take root in our personal expression. Goethe. All that a man is outwardly is but the expression and completion of his inward thought. To work effectively, he must think clearly. To act nobly, he must think nobly. Channing. Great men are they that see that spirituality is stronger than any material force, that thoughts rule the world. Emerson. Some people study all their lives, and at their death they have learned everything except to think. Domergue. It is the habitual thought that frames itself into our life. It affects us even more than our intimate social relations do. Our confidential friends have not so much to do in shaping our lives as the thoughts have, which we harbor. J. W. Teal When God lets loose a great thinker on this planet, then all things are at risk. There is not a piece of science, but its flank may be turned tomorrow, nor any literary reputation or the so-called eternal names of fame that may not be refused and condemned. Emerson Think, think, think. End of chapter 17